Colonel Terry Williams sits on the select board of Pulteney in Vermont's historic Slate Valley and hails from a long line of Slate Quarry workers. We speak with him today about the state of Slate Quarries in Vermont, the looming threat of the new Act 250, and what policies would help the industry to prosper. Colonel Williams, welcome to our show. Thanks so for today me. we're going to talk about the slate industry. Mm -hmm. Now, my understanding is that the slate industry has a lot in common with farming. Both are labor and capital intensive. Both are susceptible to the weather. And in Vermont, both represent a unique way of life, a shared heritage. Now, I would add that both sectors are also at odds with Montpelier's preferred policy agenda. So. Could you tell us how would the proposed changes to Act 250 affect the slate industry? Well, the, the industry is uh, it's old and, it's, and the people that run it are just simple everyday folks, just like farmers. As a matter of fact, a lot of farmers actually ran slate quarries. Mm -hmm. So when, when the farming weather was good, they, they ran the farm. Oh. And when they couldn't, they went up and they, and they quarried. So if they're going to impose additional restrictions on the ability for them to quarry, mm -hmm. it's going to affect the industry. So there is this misconception that uh, quarries are exempted from Act 250, but in fact there is a distinction, and it's not just a semantic one, uh, the slate quarries were grandfathered in because they were operating decades before. Correct. Now why is this distinction important? Well they were, uh, they're not exempt from Act 250, they're grandfathered because of their existence prior to June 1970. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, when they have the quarries holes that are actually exempt from Act 250 is for startup. So the quarry holes that pits that ex existed before 1970 are the ones that are exempted. Mm -hmm. The plan is, from my understanding, is that they're going to sum to that, that exemption and that will, won't allow those quarry owners to open the, reopen those pits until they ha go through the Act 250 process. So when people say that it's exempted, what they're trying to say is that the slate quarry own owners are getting away with something. Correct. But actually, they are the, the quarries are susceptible or they are um, under federal and state regulations. Correct. So I understand there are surprise visits many times a year, and so there are a lot of things that the quarry workers and owners have to comply with. Correct. Right? Yep. So it's not that it's some special exemption that they are getting that the marble and granite quarry workers aren't. They're one of the most regulated industries in the state. Really? They actually have 18 different agencies that, that regulate them. Wow. Yep. So there's also this, um, this conception that um, quarry workers are, are causing a lot of pollution, noise pollution, water pollution, they're destroying the environment. What would you say to that? There are bad actors in all industry, and there probably have been some uh, quarry owners that have caused problems for landowners, but they also cause problems for the other quarry owners. Mm -hmm. So the Slate Quarry Association was formed to try and get everybody under the same tent to take care of their own, to, to keep out the bad actors and to kind of regulate it with, from within. And so Act 250 and the laws in place, federal and state, are supposed to keep these bad actors in check? Correct. Okay. And so now finally, um, what would you say are some policies that would help the slave industry not just survive, but thrive? Actually, the infrastructure around the slate quarries is not that good. So they actually quarry, they quarry slate, put it in a truck, and they have to move it in a lot of cases to a to their uh, mill. Mm -hmm. So if they help to improve the infrastructure a little bit, which uh, you know bridges are in bad condition, roads are in bad condition, mm -hmm. uh, that would help. So instead of using environmentalism as a cudgel to um, you know, hit against certain industries, like goods industries, like manufacturing, quarries, and, and even farming, you, you'd like Montpelier to help with the infrastructure and allow the industry to prosper, the historic Vermont industry to prosper. Absolutely. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you.